So, John, I'm just recording right now as we warm up. But for the intro, I will go back and do post-production on the intro. It'll That's come fine. out better. So we'll go right into three portions. It'll be about 10 minutes each. Okay. Uh, the first 10 will be about you, your background, and why you do what you do. And it's a little bit about going online, how that's helped you. And right. then the second 10 minute, we'll talk about your success principles, the things you believe in, or maybe every corporate person needs. And he says, rituals determine your success. Focus on what matters most and coach your people. Coach your people. That's kind of like interesting. So those are your three things we'll talk about. And then finally, I mean, habits of highly successful people. Just get, let me check out the three things that I said again so I can remember. Okay, I'll tell you what they are. I'll say that, but the rituals determine your success. I should email this to people in the future, I think, this form. Yeah, uh, that would help. I'll email it back. I could do it right now, but if you want it. Yeah, well, if you could do it, you do it though. Yeah. So while okay. we're talking, I'm going to do this. So what I'm going to go, print. Uh, so when you get to San Francisco, make sure you look. give me a call. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we, we are likely to be going out in another uh, in another while. Um, so, you know, we, we will certainly do that. Maybe someday I'll put a speaking group together for the West Coast Speaking Tour. Oh, we'll San Francisco, Los Angeles, uh, Reno, and Las Vegas. Well, now that would be fun. If I can get a group of people together, that's a great idea. Get people like that's you from the international idea. perspective. I tell you something, I'd be up for that. That would be fun. I think I could get that going. I think I could do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm meeting a lot of people doing what I do here. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Yeah. Let me see. I've got to save this. Let me save this to the desktop. It's on Have desktop. I'm about to do that. I just need to put, uh, I'll just call it timelines. And I'm going to put John on here. J-O-H-N for saving save. And I'll leave this up too seconds hmm. let me just go so what time is it there it's the uh five past six in the evening yeah, that's what i thought that's a good time yeah it's fine it's better than uh Let's well see if I can the nature of what i do you know it, it does it does mean that i do some you know kind of different time time scales um, mm -hmm. Because you know, I've got clients. You know, I've got clients in the West Coast and uh, on the East Coast as well. So you know, it works in different time zones. That's it, and that's what gives you the flexibility that you couldn't do if you're trying to do everything face to face. Yeah, and actually, Europe's pretty good uh, because of that you sort of split between Europe and here. It, it seems to work. Maybe Hawaii would be rough. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Hmm. Yeah, and I, you know, I usually I messed up. You know, I set it twelve hours wrong. You caught that. That was good on this on this blab. Have you been on blab before? Never. Oh, really? We got to talk about no. that. Never been on blab. No. Uh, info. I'm just going. I just went. I just did info, and this is a, it's a PDF. It's attached. So this is your first blab, second time. What I'm gonna try to do with folks is encourage them to come on. I'm on every morning at nine or this time. Is to come in and watch blab and see the interaction. Some days I get more people than others. I'm going to start posting stuff out now. So like I'm just hitting the little Twitter button. So I just sent you I sent you the information on email. It should be there in a few minutes across the world. Oh. And while you do that, I'm going to put some stuff up on Facebook. I'm going to actually post mine. I am live right now. I am live right now. Come up and watch. Okay, I just posted that on my Facebook. I just posted some posting. So there's Mike. I'm going to let Mike come on, just chit chat. Mike is um, in Stowe. Hi, hey, Mike. Hey, um, did, did you know you're recording? Yeah, I'm trying to pre record the stuff just on the All front right. side. Hey, John. Mike, if you watch the back side, Mike helps me out. He's like the engineer, he's, <laughs> he's like the co host. Yeah, I'm going to be kind of wa watching uh, pomposously because yeah. I got some other stuff I got to do here. But then, then too, um, you look a little scary with your lighting there. So My lighting? Yeah. Is it really that bad? You look a little uh, uh, like Twilight Zone. So. Uh, okay. <laughs> I thought I was looking pretty good at the views. I, I, got my, I just moved from my bedroom, uh, the studio, uh, down to the front room. See the front room? We could do a tour of the front yeah, room. Yeah, no. My That's helicopter. It. It's neat. My helicopter coming in to land. I used to be a pilot when I was young. No, it looks like one of those where you put the flashlight under your uh, chin. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can turn that off. May I look better like that. Was that better? That's better. Yeah. 
my bronze star. Oh, wow. Now we got all the goodies. Oh, yeah. fun. And my family back there. So. No, that's, very, years ago. It's, that's a nice, a nice I'll effect. Roxanne and Roxanne's in too. We'll meet John before we start here. John, see what you get after the show. Come up and ask John questions. We're going to okay. keep this live. Hi, Roxanne. What's up? I think you look fuzzy and you're moving in slow motion. Let me tell you what I have to do. I don't, as long as my sound is good today, it's okay. When I'm done here, I need to go and hook up the uh, cat five or the wire because I think where I was, I was upstairs above us and I get a lot better, uh, Wi-Fi. So my Wi-Fi, that's why I'm probably messed up. Yeah. So okay. you, you think this looks better? Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. That no. one. No. Okay. Cause my, uh, yeah. Like my Wi-Fi box is like five feet away. Yeah. I'm going to rehook mine. Mine was right upstairs and Can we've I got the wall. Put the light above you somehow. Um, I do have lights above me right now. I've got oh. them over a little closer. Let me, let me adjust this one light down. Thanks, Roxanne. Right this, is like, this is the studio. This is the production crew you're seeing, John. <laughs> my, uh, this is the production crew. Because like my lighting is right in front of me. Let me pull it down a little yeah. bit. Pull it back a little, a little bit. You want this? You're always talking about lighting. What's my lighting like? You're good. You're good. Yeah. Little, you look good. I like your logo on the back too. I like it. Yeah. Did you paint a whole wall? No, no, no. That's just okay. That's one of these kind of exhibition things yeah. that you could just fold away. Now, the video will not be great, but that said, when I hook it up to Cat 5, it'll be fine the next day. As long as my sound is good, because the iTunes is where we get the numbers. Okay. So what we're doing is we're creating a, a, a netcast. Basically, it's going to be, we're doing the netcast right now through Blab. So we do Blab, blah, Blab, YouTube, okay. Blog. And then by tonight, when you wake up tomorrow, you'll have this up on iTunes. So it's on the same day. Have you done, you've done a few podcasts. I know that, John, right? Oh, I've done quite a few, yeah. How many people do you know that do it live and get up the same day, every day? Not so much even. So, Mike, we're going to go into the show. Well, no, I'm going to – I just wanted to tell you in case I get sidetracked and come back. Um, I saw the show – that your show was canceled for Friday, so you, you want to do our no, show? No, it's not can, – is it – I got to check. Yeah, I saw – I don't know why I got the email, but he said he can't do it, so. Who – I forgot who it was Friday. Jim. Let me look. Yeah, which – which may be a blessing. So okay. Case, oh, Matt, yeah. Hol Matt Holmes. Is it okay? I don't know. I'll check. I'll I'll get with you after the show. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. And uh, yeah, so I'll I'll bounce back in and out. But I I know um, John uh, Bill doesn't bite, and I know you guys will do a, a great. Uh, you'll have a great show today. And we you'll make sure record. And then yeah, make sure uh, yeah, Bill, look up to the left all the time because I I'm gonna, I'm going to be and make sure that button is red. So. John, I want you to do this too. Is go ahead and hit that little tweet, tweeter, hit twit, tweeter, twit, tweeter. Ah. So that's a crew. We do better as a team. Uh, we have uh, WP Tonic is uh, my co-host is English from England, and it's it's been as high as number two on WordPress for the category for podcasting. Very good. So I've met people around the world who are very very good at WordPress. So go ahead and tweet. Just hit the tweet up in the left hand, this side or wherever it is, right side, wherever. Is it the blue? Hit that yeah. once. And, and just go send. You can just go send. There you go. See down below? You just yeah. told you went on that there. So, And you can okay. figure out the you, at post production. I'm going to send you a link if you want to post it on any uh, Facebook sites or anything like that. You can go in post production. Oh, yeah. hit, that, hit that. So your first time on Blab. This is great. So we're going to. First time, uh, uh, I've been hearing a lot about it. I haven't quite got my act together to really test it, mm -hmm. so I'm really curious to see exactly how it works and and uh, and what I might do with it. Well, I wrote a course um, about not telling people not to start a podcast right away, but instead to record, put it up on YouTube, a few episodes, study it, learn it, and get good at it before you get frustrated putting up in an RSS feed and creating a, a podcast because that's going to be a lot of work and money. Yeah. And the other is basically free. And with it, and and but it was still difficult to do interviews because you'd have to have Skype, you'd have to have some other special tools. Now we don't need any special tools, so I threw that course away, and I'm rewriting a course. I'm going to have a free course out on Blab of just how to people to do Blab and get into the YouTube very fast. And I, I'm doing it daily, and I've had as many as two hundred two thousand seven hundred people watch a show, and six hundred wow. people live. And that's my number one show. In the morning, it varies, and what will happen is once we're done with the show, other people will come in and ask you questions, and we'll start coming up. And we'll have, probably have about 50 people pass through, maybe 60, 
And then they'll watch it on Blab, they'll watch it on YouTube, but the podcast is really the target. Right, so, so is, is, the, is the podcast the kind of the the, the, the the primary end product? Yes, yes, the podcast okay. on iTunes. But that's that's starting to die a little bit of steam now um, because of these other social media platforms. iTunes is starting to lose it a little bit. So I'm going in and creating a new app because the new iTunes app, I'm getting a lot of complaints from people. You know the app, it's on your iPhone. Do you have an iPhone? Yeah, I do, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I first started two years ago, I used to ask people, are you a Mac or PC? But when I would talk to people who were younger, I said, what's that mean? <laughs> How things have changed. Yeah, so. Okay, we're going to take a break. Uh, Commander is in watching us from England right now. I'm going to lock down the seat. I probably don't have the best video right now because of my connection, but that's okay. As long as the sound is okay. So when I wave this, it means I'm coming to a quick break. We'll just put a break and talk off the record. I've got a pop. John, welcome to Timelines. It's good to see you here. But my first question right off the bat is, how's the weather in France? Well, the weather is lovely. It's uh, nice and sunny during the day. It's seasonally, uh, well, unseasonally warm. And we've had extremely mild winter. But the good news is that we're still getting snow in the mountains. So there's plenty of skiing to be done, which is great. Very good. Now, you don't sound like a Frenchman. I understand you were raised in Dublin? Well, with a surname like Murphy, there aren't too many uh, nationalized French people with a surname like Murphy. So, yes, it is a giveaway. I was born and bred in Dublin and worked uh, pretty much all my career in Dublin. And we just moved to France here uh, about five years ago. The kids had kind of grown, uh, grown up and gone off. I have one daughter, as I mentioned to you, in, in San Francisco, and I have two other daughters in Melbourne. So a little bit that kind of gone that way. And it uh, must be something I was said. And uh, so there was just myself and my wife. So we decided that the, the business was changing. So we said we, we had the house here for a number of years anyway. So we thought, listen, let's come, let's try it. Let's see how we like it. And uh, it's just been fantastic. So what type of business were you in up in Dublin? Uh, did it evolved your coach and you're a professional that teach corporate executives. Yeah. How did you get there? What did you do to be able to create well, those credentials? Well, I mean, what I did, my, my, I kind of did the traditional uh, corporate career. I started off as, a, as a, an insurance salesman. Then I became a sales manager. Then I became a marketing manager. Then I became a sales director. And then I ended up as a CEO of a company within the group. And I did that for for quite a number of years and corporate life was very good to me and as you know you know it, it corporate life is good to you and at a senior level you, you're well looked after or well rewarded and uh costed it to a certain extent uh, but i also began to feel that you know i've done all i wanted to do and it was beginning to get a little bit boring and i was beginning to repeat myself so i thought if i don't leave now i'll never leave and then i regret it but so i made the decision to leave before i made a decision about what i was going to do next and uh, what I did was really, I really just took the part of the job in the corporate world that I really loved. Uh, and that was, I loved putting teams together. I loved getting them working effectively together and efficiently together. And I loved coaching individuals and coaching people within that team. And that's really what I took out uh, to be my business. And, and that's what I've been doing. I'm, I'm a big, big believer in teams. My family owns businesses. They're small businesses. And one of them is a real estate company or real estate companies. And we have really focused at the idea of creating teams within agents because not any one agent by themselves. And that's pure sales, as you know. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the, at the end of the day, you know, if you get, you know, sometimes people hire people because they're expert and they're brilliant and they're great kind of superstars. But if they can't work together as a team, you're never going to get the value out of them. So it really is about getting that combination right within the team and getting the balance right within the team and getting those people lined up that they're really going to work cohesively together hold each other accountable it doesn't mean that's all happy clappy but if they hold each other accountable and they can have rows but it doesn't become personal and it's all about supporting each other and getting the job done and that get that right and you can you know you can really really go through walls so what type of corporations do you coach well, I, quite a variety, to be honest with you. I, and I, my background in, in terms of my own corporate life was in financial services. So, uh, and I had a thing about it that when I left, was not any logic to it particularly, but I had this thing that I wanted to prove that, you know, it, my skills weren't just about financial services, that they were, they transcended industry, because I really passionately believed that. 
and still do. And thankfully, I've been able to, to validate that. So I work with a range of organizations from, you know, very large multinationals. And I, I've been fortunate to work with some very large ones and still do. And uh, but then I also work with, the, uh, you know, smaller businesses, uh, owner own businesses and entrepreneurial startups. So it's been right across from pharmaceutical to retail, from technology to, you know, uh, a corner shop. So it's, it's been a great it's been a great mix. And it really comes down to working with people that you relate to and that you connect with and that you really can work together to make something significant out of. Did you work on the uh, sales and marketing side of the corporations or what part of the corporation do you work with? Well, I, I, my background would be in sales and marketing. I tend to work with senior management teams, so they tend to be cross-functional teams. And uh, because what I learned as a CEO was that, you know, you've got to get those cross-functional teams working really, really together because otherwise you end up with kind of divisions within an organization that, you know, don't talk to each other, don't communicate and aren't aligned. And if you get those cross-functional teams really working together, you know, you, you've got a really good chance of, of, of success. So the teams tend to be the kind of the, the, the top teams that I work with. Interesting. You know, I'm, I'm very small. I'm very small now compared to what I was before 9-11, even my own business. It was never real big. I had seven employees and we ran a design bill construction. And my wife and I had one employee for over 17 years. But I'm very small now. But even as a small team, I know how important it is to communicate now, though, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to go more online and creating these online environments like you've done. You've gone and, and added online. What online do you do to help people and coach now that's different than what you used to do when it was all face-to-face? -face? Well, what I found was, and, and I mean, I, and I'd love to say Bill, that I kind of thought this through and it was a very strategic decision and it was very long-term visionary and all that sort of thing. The truth is it kind of evolved as, as, as I went along. What I discovered was the you know the traditional role of one-to-one -one coaching, where I go to your office on Tuesday morning, and I sit with you from nine to twelve, and we do that, and I'll go through all the stuff, and then I go away, and then I send you an invoice for half a day, and all that sort of stuff, and you know it just wasn't working for all sorts of reasons. One was that you know the executives now they're time poor, so you know they don't have three hours to give, and they also you know don't need three hours to give. And also they don't, you know, they move around, they travel a lot, so people are away and people don't want to be invoiced for half a day by time. So I really played around with the model and started to kind of feel, well, you know, I can do this by phone, I can do it by Skype. And it just evolved into, and then I kind of thought, hang on a second, if that's the case, you know, I don't, I don't ever actually have to meet the people face to face because with the likes of, you know, the technology nowadays with Skype, FaceTime, all the other ways, that we have a communicating, we don't actually need to meet. And I've moved the business from three years ago where I really started to put a focus on developing an online business. And up to that, 100% of my revenue would have come just from connections that I would have had through my own network, through referrals and the traditional way of getting business. Started to build an online platform. And now my income is split. I get 40% of my income directly through uh, the online activity that I do through blogging, podcasting, videos, etc. And I, so I coach the senior executives one-to-one. -one. Team programs, I still do face-to-face, -face, but the 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 one-to-one the -one coaching, I do online. And I've, you know, I have clients all over the world. I mean, I, I, I do, earlier on today, it's evening time for me where I am. But, you know, today I had, to, I had a meeting with somebody in, in Ireland, and I had a meeting with somebody in Munich, and I had a meeting with somebody in Toulouse. Now, you know, you know how to fly a plane, but even you flying the plane around the place, Bill ain't going to get me all those places in one day. Uh, so it does make it very effective. And it also does make it very efficient in the sense that if somebody is traveling, that's no barrier to actually having the session and having the conversation. So the technology really does enable you to do it. And it also broadens your market because your reach is much wider. You know, I, I see that model, but, you know, it's really nice at least once a year to meet face to face with people to actually understand them better. Yeah. Well, I think that you do build a relationship online. I mean, I think that, you know, and, you know, it's not for everybody, right? Let me say, I, and I fully accept it's not for everybody, but I'm not trying to do business with everybody. And uh, so, you know, for the people that it works and that it, it's, it's just a great way of doing it. And you do build connections with people, uh, you know, by using Skype or FaceTime, whatever it is, because you, you see the body language, you see the expression, you do get it and you do get the intonation. It's better than telephone, I can tell you that. 
of course, meeting face to face, it brings another dimension to it. But from a professional perspective, you know, it really does work where, where you're actually doing it in a remote in a remote basis. And there are quite, a, I mean, there are quite a number of my clients that I've never physically met. And, uh, and yet we have very good relationships. You saw a part of the timeline team. They came up ahead of time and said, hi, today. Yeah. You like that on Blab. That's, this is changing. This didn't exist a year ago. Uh, there's, a, there's a company called Zoom. I played around with Zoom. I like Zoom. Have you ever tried Zoom yet? I have, I it, and I keep meaning to go back in and, and, and look at it again. It just reminded me that I should go back in and do that because, you know, I was using other kind of paid systems, but then I realized, well, why would you pay for something that's free? It, it is free and it works. I, it's amazing. There is a premium account, but uh, Zoom is just amazing. Uh, I, we have a friend in part of a relationship in Washington, D.C., who's really close with the owner of Zoom, and they're putting in 15 uh, Sixty thousand dollar media centers for the government, and Zoom is just an amazing tool that they're starting to use, and yeah, they're looking yeah. at all sorts of different things. Zoom is really going to take over the world, I think, and that's it's so easy to use. My team, we work on Zoom all the time. We'll come up, see each other face to face. I like going where you have video, where it's not just uh, talking, because then you have the person's full focus. You know, yeah. you you can see so much more. So there's something to that that didn't exist years ago. It was too expensive to get into this face-to-face -face like we can do now for virtually nothing. Absolutely. I mean, and I'm fascinated by, you know, what, what we're doing here on Blab because it's, it's, it's not something that I've got experience of. And it's to see how I could use that and, and, and leverage that for my own yeah. business. I'm working with politicians right now trying to figure out how we can use this platform to bring in the communities. And with that, I'm going to go to a break. When we come back to break, we have a question from the audience. Silence. Well, John, welcome back from the break. So we've got a question from a listener today who's live, and it is, what is your goal and focus for your company, and what is in it? What is in the future? What are you doing in the future? Well, my goal for the company has always been about helping executives to, um, to win a business in life, and also to getting, you know, really getting teams to work efficiently together so that they also kind of create a better lives for themselves and the people that are around them. So that continues to be my goal. I look at all, continuously looking at developing new products and services I can add into the, the coaching. For example, I've you know, introduced in the last period of time, I introduced you know, emotional intelligence assessment into it. I've got a team program that I work with teams over a 12 month period. I'm also developing at the moment a kind of a shorter version of that that people would do over maybe a two or three months and really would be very much a kind of a, a quick, you know, injection of pace into an organization so that they can keep the business going, but then accelerate the growth in that business. So, you know, it's all the time evolving and, 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 and changing, but it's very much kind of aimed at that, you know, senior management team, uh, CEO, senior executives and business owners, because I'm very, very clear about the, 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 the target market that I have. And, and I will continue to kind of offer services into that. I'm not, a, I'm, a, I'm not a great believer in spreading the target marketing. I'm a great believer in being really clear and specific about doing that and then finding what else I can do to bring value to that group. When you say target marketing, could you explain that further? Well, the people, the, the, the target market, which are the kind of the, the segment of the market that I serve and the segment that, I'm, that I serve are senior management teams and senior executives. And I'm very clear that that's the group of people that I serve and that I work with. And then it's really about making sure that I'm bringing the kind of the best service, the best product and uh, the best development to that group of people. Very good. Hey, have, just out of curiosity, have you ever worked with politicians? Politicians? Uh, no, I haven't actually. No, I it's not. It's I think not. Our, American, our American race right now could do some help. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, one of the, every now and again, I have this kind of burning desire to say, maybe there, because, you know, if I look at around, you kind of see, you know, civil servant departments that you think are really in, inefficient. And then you go and talk to them about doing something, and then you just get a sense they don't want to change. So, you know, there's no point in going in and trying to push water uphill. And that's probably why I have opted out of doing that in, in, in the past. Yeah, that's funny. I was a uh, vice mayor of a city before the war broke out, a city council and vice mayor. And we used to have people come in to try to help us get along all the time. <laughs> Our seven <laughs> council members of a city of 200,000. 
Yeah, well, you know, the, you know, at the end of the day, there's, when you when you go to work with the team, Bill, there's got to be a willingness on the team members to actually change. If there isn't a willingness to change, it's all just it's all just words. And right. I don't want to be associated with something that is not going to be a success. I think politics is very hard. People are very uh, opinionated when it comes to politics. So you need to be. Yes. So we're going to go into your success in life principles, leadership principles. You have three today. And the first one is uh, rituals determine your success. Yeah, I'm very passionate about rituals because, I, you know, we all have rituals, whether we you know, recognize them as rituals or we don't. But, you know, it can, we, I can be, have a ritual that I don't get up early any, every morning. I can have a ritual that the first thing I do is go to the coffee shop and stuff my face full of coffee and donuts. And that's also a ritual, right? It just happens to be a ritual that doesn't serve me. So I think that all our lives are, are, are a product and a consequence of the rituals that we have. So we need to make sure that we are, you know, we've got ourselves some rituals that really feed us. And we've got to feed ourselves physically, obviously, but mentally, you know, emotionally, spiritually, whatever that means to you. But you've got to find the things that are going to really invigorate you on a, day, on a daily basis because we all need to do it because if we're going to give it all every day and the, and, and the day is the only thing that you're certain of, I'm only certain of today and here and now, and I've got to give it my best and try and give my best right now. And I'm only going to do that if every day I do something that's going to replenish me, regenerate me, refresh me, and really get me motivated. And I think people really have got to get, 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 get rituals that serve them. It's going to be different for different people, but you've got to get your own base rituals in. And they've got to kind of cross over, not just the physical side, but the emotional side, the spiritual side, and, and also any other part of your world that you're, that, that you're trying to enrich. But you've really got to do it and make them part of your daily habit. Because, you know, we can all say, oh, I don't have time because of this, because of where I live and I commute. We all do have time. We just make decisions to use it differently. So if it's important enough, you'll do it. And, you know, once you actually get into it, you, you begin to see the real benefit of doing it. And, and like you, Bill, I mean, I interview and, you know, a lot of people from my own podcast and, you know, read biographies of, of very successful people as well. And the one common theme that you get from everybody is that they do have their own rituals that really, really serve them well. And I think it's just so important for people to do it. And it's a cop out to say that, you know, we don't at the time, because if you look at it and you assess just taking one thing, how much time people spend looking at television or how much time people spend just, you know, just going down through social media aimlessly, how much time they spend doing that every single day. And if you took that time and you spend half the time doing something physically and you spend half the time doing something for yourself emotionally, it would do you an awful lot better. What are, when you get up in the morning, do you have a ritual? I do, yeah. I mean, my ritual, as I said, it's different for everybody. My ritual is I, I, when I get up, I get up at six o'clock every morning. Uh, what I do, the first thing that I do is that I uh, meditate um, for 15 minutes. Then I journal for about another 15 minutes. And then I write because I'm living in France and I'm trying to get better at French. I write in French for, for 15 minutes. And then I do a workout for a half an hour. And then I go and have breakfast. And then I come back and the first thing I do is that I just kind of start doing some mapping out for the day. And I've done it from the day before, but I just confirm that that's exactly what I want to do. And that's that's how I start every day. When you write in French, do you think differently? Do you look at a different perspective? Do you think it changes your perspective? You know, it's interesting. You know, as I'm kind of getting a bit better at the French, I find that, I, you know, it, it does. Um, I certainly found initially, and I think it's true of everybody when you're learning a language, that all you're doing is thinking in English and then translating. And then when you begin to get a bit more comfortable with the language, you're doing less translating and it's it's more kind of, you know, stream of consciousness. But I still, you know, I still every now and again I get stuck and then I have to kind of think about it, can't remember the word and translate it. But yes, it does. And I think that it's 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 also interesting when you live in, a, in another culture, and the, the culture of France is, is different to the culture that I uh, grew up in. And that also does give, it does give you a different perspective. And also the nature of my work is that I, I work in different countries. So, you know, I do work in France. I do work in the United States. I do work in, in the UK. I do work in Germany. I do work in Spain. I do work in the Middle East. And so, you know, you move around and... It's, it's always interesting because you just it just reminds you of the differences, and that's the fascinating part. 
Right. In right. That international. International. Yeah. Okay, John, your next point is focus on what matters. Yeah, focus on what matters most. Uh, I think that, you know, it's a really important thing that people talk about. You know, very often I talk to them and they say, oh, you know, what I what I need to do is, is to, to, to do some training on time management. My answer is always, no, you don't. That's just a, a complete misunderstanding of what your what your situation is. Because, you know, you don't manage time. You just, you know, because time is. What you do is got, you've got to manage yourself. And within that, you've got to make sure that you're focused on the things that really are going to deliver the key things. And I, I'm a great fan of the, the Warren Buffett principle. And he, he would say, and I remember reading it many years ago, and it's kind of stuck in my head, that in any business, and God knows he knows enough businesses uh, to be an expert on, but he said in any business, there are probably about five or six key things that you need to have in your dashboard. And if you keep those five or things, six things on your dashboard, and you look after them and you keep them going and you keep them moving forward the way that you want, then the chances are you're going to have a very successful business. And I think that's true. The challenge is actually making sure you've got the right five or six things on the dashboard. And for most organizations, it's actually really making sure that the things that they're focused on are the things that what matters most. And we're not just getting busy firefighting, that we're not just busy reacting, that we're not just busy because it's the thing that's in front of us. And and this really comes down to how we plan weeks, how we plan our time. And one of the things that I learned many years ago from uh, attending Tony Robbins, uh, where he talked about the thing about scheduling. And it was not something, I mean, not, not scheduling wasn't new to me, but in terms of scheduling time with yourself to do the things that matter most. And I kind of heard it, but it kind of didn't really resonate with me for a period of time. And then when I put it together with the, the principle from Warren Buffett, what I did find out is that if you then, when you're planning your week, that we, most people tend to have in their diaries are appointments with other people. So if you, set, if you schedule in and do appointments with yourself to do the things that matter most, the chances are they will happen. Won't always happen because life gets in the way, but the chances are that they will happen. And that piece of scheduling is really important. So it is important that you schedule the things that matter most and the things that are going to drive your business forward and you get them into your schedule first and then you work around those as best you can. But it's not just about being busy because so many people get busy on other people's agendas, on issues that come up, and everybody runs around you know, firefighting. So we're all terribly busy, but we ain't getting the things done that should be getting done. And that's what I, I talk about, being really clear about the things that are going to make the biggest difference to your business and making sure you're dedicating time to that. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the, to, to focus on the things that matter most. Now, John, yesterday, Tony Robbins did his very first blab. Did he? Mm -hmm. Very first. Oh. I watched it, too. Yeah. Well, yes, you know, he, he's, 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 quite, he's quite extraordinary. And his, I mean, his, his, his content is, is just so solid and so practical. I mean, I, I would be a fan, I have to admit. And I uh, learned a lot from him. He's been around for a long time. He has. And I think, you know, it's interesting even when you reflect upon that because what he's saying today is not really any different to what he was saying 20 years ago. And it just demonstrates that the fundamentals don't change all that much. That you really, you know, if, and if you think about it in, in kind of from a management perspective, yes, technology is a great enabler. Technology does wonderful things for us and makes us so much more effective and efficient. But when we actually look about efficiency and effectiveness, the thought process are still very much the same thought processes that, that existed, albeit with more information and knowledge that we've gained over that period of time. But the, the, the you know, it, it is the, you know, because I know you, you, all, you asked me kind of what was one of my favorite books and, you know, and it, it, it ties into the same comment we're making here because, you know, it, it's, it is the Stephen Covey, Seven Habits. And it was only, I mean, I read that, oh, I don't know, how long ago was that written? It must be. 30 years ago, was it? Say 30 that years. Long. It's hard to believe it's that long. I reread it when yeah. I went back. Yeah. And, you know, I, and, you know, when you go back and you kind of think so much that we're, we're talking about now, you can actually bring it back to what he was talking about in that book. And that's why I think it's one of those great kind of evergreen perennial books that people should read 
if they really want to build a purposeful life. And I, I, I think it's, it's, it's fantastic. And the same what you're saying about Tony Robbins, what, he's, what he was saying 20, 25 years ago, he's still saying the same thing now. You know, he's just using, I mean, Blab, he just started yesterday. He's just been using technology to get his message out in a more effective and efficient way. I'm going to, after the show on the YouTube portion, after the podcast, I'm going to go into more detail. And I want to ask you some questions about the new tools and how they apply to the old ways. So we're going to hold out because we don't have enough time on the uh, podcast. Yeah. Okay, John, the last one is coach your people and we're going to go to a break. Okay, so when you talk about coach your people, I, and I'm saying that as opposed to manage your people, um, and there's a big difference between the two, and for, for, for many people, is actually understanding the difference between the two. And it's many, many years ago, somebody said to me uh, something that really helped me to kind of get it clear in my own head. And he said to me, he said, you know, he said, you manage process and things, and you coach people, and you coach and lead people. And, and I think that's so very true, because, and, and we need to do both. I'm not saying you don't manage, do any managing. You need to do both, because you need to manage the process and the things as well. But don't mistake that for how you're actually growing and developing your people. And you've got to coach your people in a way that is you're coaching them for their benefit. You're not coaching them necessarily for your benefit. You've got to understand what their goals, what their aspirations, what their objectives are in life. And you've got to really figure out what you can do to support them, to help them grow. Because coaching is not about giving the answers or giving the solutions. It's about helping other people to find the solutions. And I think that, you know, people confuse managing and coaching and they get the two crossed over. And yes, you've got to do both. And I would always say separate both. But if you coach your people, the benefit, you will get more from coaching your people than you will from managing your people every day of the week. Because when you coach your people, that's about getting them at, 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 an, at an emotional level. They're going to be engaged with you. They're going to be passionate about sharing your vision. They're going to be passionate about creating that vision and delivering on that vision. You don't get that from managing. You get that from coaching because people buy into it and they really will see where you want to go with the organization and what their part is in creating that, that great jigsaw of what the finished product looks like. So I would really, really, you know, I would encourage people to make sure that you're giving time and it's dedicated time to coaching people. It is the e easiest thing in the world to rationalize that you don't have the time, you're too busy, all of that sort of stuff. Don't. For God's sake, don't. Invest the time in coaching your people. You will get it back a hundred times. I guarantee you. So after the show on the YouTube portion, which you can find at timelinesofsuccess.com, I'm going to go ahead and ask you some more questions about coaching. And we'll open that up to the audience too. With that, we're going to go to a break. You're going to come back with your commercial and then how we can get a hold of you. Okay, folks, we are coming back off the break. John only has about tw uh, 10 more minutes. So we're going to wrap up the podcast portion and open it up to the audience so we can get some uh, questions in on the YouTube side. So, John, how does the listener find you? Well, the best way to get in touch with me is through my website, which is www.johnmurphyinternational.com, or they can email me at john at johnmurphyinternational.com. And I'd be delighted to answer any questions anybody might have, uh, get in touch, you know, some ideas, some, some resources, some thoughts as to how they might, you know, ignite their team. Very good. So what, if I, let's say I want to hire you, I'm a, I'm a CEO, I can just contact you and, and ask you, no, how do I get a hold of you? And that's how you do it, basically. Yeah, exactly. Just go directly. Very go good. Directly. That's where to so, get in touch. One last question. What do you see of the differences on a military leadership style that you learn in the academies, Sandhurst, and you go out and fight the wars and do all those things? And then as you transition to the corporate and to what we're doing today, how has it changed? What is the new type of leadership? Well, I think that the, the probably the most significant change, and when you're talking about it from a military perspective, it's the military perspective, and so there's nothing wrong because it's right and fit for purpose, but the military perspective is very much about command and control. And in today's world, in today's businesses, it's, it's, it really, we can't adopt that same approach. It's about engaging people. It's about getting people to buy into your vision. It's about getting people to collaborate. It's about motivating people to actually perform to the best of their ability. 
So, you know, when you look at the, 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 the leader in the military sense, as they were very much about command and control, the leader now in the, in the business world has got to be much more a servant and has got to be much more a facilitator of, get, of getting things done rather than being a commander of getting things done. Because, you know, when you look at the generation that, that's coming through, they want to belong to something. They want to belong to something that they can really believe in. But they are not accustomed to that command and control uh, environment. They want to be independent. They want to kind of, you know, create their own path and walk their own path. And you can allow them do that, you know, as long as you're actually getting them to buy into that vision. So it's a very, very different approach. It's a, it's a much more giving of yourself and opening up of yourself and actually encouraging people and motivating and developing people to become the future leaders in, uh, of tomorrow. And that's what I think is probably the biggest difference. Well, John, we appreciate your time and we look forward to seeing you out West in California and in San Francisco. Absolutely. I look forward to being there and I will be there in the none too distant future. Great. Okay. We are still on YouTube and a lot of times it, it varies from day to day. Sometimes I'll have tons of people come up. But I technically don't have anybody at this instant. But if we had questions, they come up now, which I'm surprised I don't. We've had 15 people come through. And it right. just varies on the day. The day is Wednesday. It's funny. Sundays, you get tons. And it depends how much I promote it. I didn't really promote it a lot last night because I was busy. I had to move my uh, my little station here. And it sounds like it's going fine and our visuals are good. But that was a really, really good show. Um, I, I do have some other questions, more detail about how things have changed. You know, working online is a really new environment. Uh, for me, um, you have to build these relationships and they're different. They're not sort of like contract. They're not employee relationships. They're more of a cooperation. Let's do something together. I know Jonathan Denwood, who uh, is not was in here earlier and then left. They're all working right now. Basically, uh, you know, we have created the number one podcast show for WordPress, not one number two. And it couldn't have been done without a team. But what do you see some of the new challenges for people on this working remotely or virtual assistants or having people around the world working for you. I always thought my design build construction, I could sub out all my design work you know, or my drafting work, you know, yeah. to, to virtual, it's just sort of changing. So what do you see on the differences? What can well, we do? I, think, I mean, you know, because you can, because you can do it so easily nowadays, I, you know, I mean, it, it has brought a very, very different dynamic to the whole way of managing people because, you know, again, it goes back. You don't have, I mean, I would have grown up with the kind of command and control type. <laughs> I did. <laughs> and, uh, so, you know, and, and I could see that change very rapidly. And when you look at when you're dealing with people remotely, you know, unless you have them in, engaged with you emotionally, you know, it's it just isn't going to work. You know, otherwise you're just a you're just a meal ticket that they clock in hours for and they they put in the hours and you pay them. And it's a very transactional relationship. And if you have that sort of just purely transactional relationship, you're going to miss a beat and it's going to be a very big beat that you miss because you really got to work and spend time with them, painting the picture of what you're trying to achieve and then making them feel part of it. You know, it's not just enough to kind of, you know, the, the, in, in some ways, the, 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 when people could talk about outsourcing, it's almost as if there's kind of these faceless people out there and I'll give them to them and then they will do the work and they'll send it back to me. Great on paper. Not sure that it works all that great in reality if that's the way you approach it. You still have to build the relationship. You still have to engage with them because you want them to go the extra yard for you. You want them to be really committed doing it in a certain way. And if you end up with a purely transactional relationship, then, you know, something better comes along. A better transaction comes along. They're just going to drop you and go to the next transactional relationship. So if you want to have continuity and longevity, which you need to have in order to kind of maintain a really excellent service. You've got to build that relationship and trust. And the whole thing about trust, the, the, it, the, you've got to build it on trust in exactly the same way as you build the trust on a, on a kind of, a, if, if you was face to face. And you've got to approach the trust on exactly the same way. But it is a different dynamic when you're doing it remotely and you've got to understand the different dynamic and understand the different cultures that you're dealing with because you're not always dealing with your own culture. And you know, you've got to understand that, that, but it is about, if you don't paint the vision, you just end up with a transactional relationship. And that transactional relationship 
doesn't work for the long term. If you do paint the vision and they understand the importance of their role in creating that vision, then they will engage with you and they will stay with you. You know, I, I think, just go ahead. No, I think that I think that's the, that's the big difference. And I, I mean, and I certainly learned I learned the hard way when I when I outsourced originally, because I I I kind of thought it was just you know contract them to do the piece of work and they'll send it back to me. I'll pay them. Hey, ain't that so simple? And I, and I learned that it just wasn't that way, that actually the principles I was talking about in terms of building that relationship were every bit as valid as I would have said in a kind of a, a face-to-face relationship. And there's two areas we could go now. I don't know, you only have a few more minutes, but yeah. you brought up two really important questions that I found. When you start building that online business, it's very difficult to develop trust, to figure out who to trust, who not to trust. I've helped a lot of business guys here locally who have really been messed over online, uh, just not owning their domains, things of that nature, getting bad advice. The The second way we could go is um, looking at these big companies, in my experience, and probably yours too, is we've got Apple, we've got Google, and we've got um, Adobe. Those are three big companies I work with, with direct support, actually pay extra for support. And I can honestly say whatever Google is doing worldwide, and most of my support is from Eastern Europe or someplace, it has been the absolute best support on the Google business compared to Adobe has been the worst. Apple is not bad, but Adobe has not Adobe, but Google has been amazing. How do those businesses create that culture internationally? And that's, I like you to answer, think about that, that international question. I think there's a lot of work there to help people figure out how to work internationally. Like we're doing now online. Absolutely. No, I agree with you. It's interesting. I was talking to somebody yesterday and they were talking, from a different perspective than what you're talking about now, they were talking about people working in organizations. And that the point he, he was making to me, and he has worked in, in Silicon Valley, he said, he said, you know, he said, the difference is he said people love working in Google. They love it. Uh-huh. And that creates its own culture. People don't necessarily love being in Apple. I, I you know, I was stationed after I, I was a pilot and an engineer, and I was stationed in Moffett Field is a reserve pilot, um, right in Moffett Field is in Silicon Valley. And one of my friends who was the same grade I was, we were young captains and majors, and he worked, he was a very wealthy, but he worked for Apple and hated it, hated yeah. working for Apple. But he was really smart and he got so wealthy working for Apple because he worked there for a long time early on. But he hated the culture, but he liked it. He was like, a, he was stuck to it. It was something weird about yeah. it, but he made so much money. But, you know, it's an interesting thought. And I, I mean, and you know, I, I was only taking, I'm taking what this guy said to me yesterday on face value because I, I haven't worked with either organizations. But it is interesting when you think about it and you think of the people who are the, who are the leaders. Now, <laughs> I could be adding two and two together and getting five, okay? But if you think about the leadership and you look at something like Steve Jobs, I don't know what everybody else knows about Steve Jobs in terms of, you know, books and stories and all that sort of stuff. But by all, by all accounts, not a most pleasant man to work with. No. Right? Difficult, challenging, all genius, yes, but difficult and challenging. And the interesting thing is, when you think about it, perhaps even being the genius that he was did not compensate for the lack of good leadership that he could have portrayed. You know, I see it too as he wasn't able to really, he had some very good people around him, but like the CEOs he hires were not good. He didn't. Yeah. He, he didn't draw in the very best people to be around him, and that's so important. Yet he did amazing things with his company. Extraordinary. I mean, man is a genius, undoubtedly. But you know, at the same time, you know, where you've got, it doesn't always those skills, those brilliance, and all that doesn't necessarily, you know, really don't help you to get over the fact if you're not a good leader of people and you're not a good developer of people, being a genius just isn't enough. Well, John, I know you have to go, but I'll give you a homework assignment. I'd love to have you on in six months. And if you get out to San Francisco, maybe we'll put on a little tour out here in the West someday. I love it. But here's the homework. If you could look at Google and Apple and maybe Adobe and just tell me what in those cultures makes them good or bad, because I'm really, really impressed with the Google online support. It's just unbelievable how much better it is. Apple's not bad because I pay premium in those two areas. I need it for my business. But it's just amazing. Extraordinary, isn't it? So that's you your know, homework. If you culture, the mission. Cultural, cultural is not that kind of ephemeral, hard to hard to um, nail. It's it's very real. I always say to anyone, and I leave it on this party note: if you want another another culture of organization, 
listen to the conversation and the language that tells you the culture. You know, the other thing, too, is just just in the back of your mind is you're in a great place right now with this international approach because we're becoming so international. I get my support from like Eastern Europe on through Google, a lot of it. And it's excellent. It's really good. I just spilt my coffee like twice. I get so excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank yeah, you. Stay in the lab for a while and I'll wait for folks to come up. But I want you to we'll have this up to you in a few hours, the YouTube version, right. and you'll get some emails during the day. But I Love definitely you. enjoy coming on how did you find out about the show to come on i how did i find out yeah I, well it was true jessica address uh, um oh, jessica jessica Rhodes. Rhodes, very good yeah. uh, she's one of my favorite her yeah, she's really right. she's squared away i wish i was as squared away as she is <laughs> very Bill, good I got to listen talk to you real soon and thank you i thoroughly enjoyed it Thanks, first class, I, I loved it see you on six months with that homework assignment absolutely okay thank cheers <laughs> bye so there we go. We finished up another an, a new location. I don't think my um, video is probably as good as it should be today because of the um, connection. Uh, my Wi-Fi is usually right above me, and I'm in the next room over. As you can see, I'm in my formal living room. Get the picture back here. We have some other stuff we can show, too. In fact, let's do something. I should have paused that thing. My sister said I should have left this in the background. This is what it looked like this morning. That's my 13-year-old's project. You can see it. <laughs> Probably should have. It made people think a little bit more. So we are open right now. Let's see if I can't change and get somebody up online. Well, we're looking around the map. It looks like John from the map is kind of nice, is in the south east part of France, which I assume is close to the Italian French Alps, which I, I got to climb years ago. So it's kind of interesting to always look at the map. We're always trying to figure out something new on Blab, how we can use Blab better. We use the questions today. We took a lot more pauses today in the show too. So as we evolve and create better Blabs, which come to blogs, turn into YouTube and then the podcast. Actually, they go in this order. They go Blab, YouTube, Blog, and then podcast. Sometimes I, I try to do as much as I can in the blog the night before, the day before. So when we set it up. so. I've got to check on um, everything that's set up. Surprise, this is a strange day. It is strange not having more people on today. That's very unusual. Can't quite figure out why. We'll have to find out, though. So, Dylan, we're recording right now on YouTube. I just finished up an interview with a person from France, John John yeah. um, Murphy. Okay. What part of France are you from? In the West. In the West. Near the Pyrenees? No, 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 uh, Northwest, uh, Brittany. Oh, Brittany. Okay, Brittany. That's, yeah. Is that Northwest? Yeah. Um, no, not Northwest. Northwest. It would be like West up along the coast? Yeah. So what do you, what do you, you speak French and English and what other languages? Uh, so I'm studying foreign languages. I'm studying French, English, Spanish, and Chinese too. Wow. Wow. Now you said Chinese. Nihama? Nihama. Wuhau. Sheshe. Wuhau. Sheshe. I know a little bit. I forgot. I studied French when I was I studied English when I was saying. I studied a lot of different languages too when I was young. But you forget if you don't use them. Yeah. yeah. I, I was in bed with the French in the army. I was in the American army, but put with the French for a year. Oh, so, really? Yeah, I cannot I can understand quite a bit of French, but I don't like to speak French. <laughs> My French is not good. <laughs> The French make fun no. of me. No. Uh, do you want to speak French? Uh, um, sure. To view. To view. To view. How are you? To. Hello. No. Where do you live? Where do you live? Uh, Reno, Nevada. Je, oh, okay. I'm, I, I better not speak French. I don't want to embarrass myself. It's been too long right now. So tell me. Uh, okay. You. How long have you been on Blab? 10 days? Um, yeah, 10 days. Uh, How did you discover Blab? Um, on the TV. On, on the TV. What do you mean? Yeah. Um, I was watching the TV and uh, an advertisement uh, from Blab. Really? So, yeah. The regular TV, I like the TV, started. cable TV. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 
and I installed the, the app and this is a quite all right, what are you on your phone? A smartphone, iPhone? Oh, I just froze. Good. Uh, Stay on uh, with me. This is interesting. Yeah. You're on your iPhone, right? We can talk about lots of like this. Yeah, yeah, it works really well. I could come up too while we're doing this. Let me show you a little trick. I usually do this, and it really helps. I think it's uh, it's really interesting. Normally, I have more people. I do a show every day on Blab, then we turn it into a podcast. The podcast is on timelinesofsuccess.com. I'm going to type it in here. What do you and you're studying in yeah, school? Okay. What what do you when you yeah, finish school? Well, what do you want to do? Um, I want to be a, a commercial, commercial what? Export. Export. You're broken a little bit. Say that again. Export. Oh, I want to be a commercial expert. Yeah. No, export, you know, um, to, oh, export. in the market. You want to be an export. Export and import. You want to export yeah. or import? Ex yeah, sorry for that. I don't know. <laughs> you know, um, I'm in the second year of the university, so I will see later when I... See what you look like on my iPhone? When it will be time. Isn't that neat? And we'll go ahead yeah. and rejoin. I'll join here as another person. And let me turn this down, turn that. So now it's, now you can see like this and we have another person come on and I can go ahead and give you, I can do it two ways. Watch this. You know what these are? No, this is a, let me like go view. A, yeah, Instead like. of like, they call it uh, props. So let me go actual props, stuff. Okay. When you say something, it's good. Right, and so I can do two. If I get two people going here, I can go here and here and build up your props very fast. And props are important. I forgot to do that earlier today. And hide. Ready? Let me go on here too. See? So, what, what Let's talk for a few minutes. Usually today? I stay on until about uh, for 15 more minutes. What What was the weather like in France today? Okay. And we're oh, up in the north. Bad. Yeah, the coast. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it, uh, it's yeah. raining. So when you uh, you're studying, what do you see for exporting? How do you make money in the exporting business? Go to work for. How do I make money? Uh, I don't know. Would you work for a corporation? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I want to. The uh, and you. I was. You, uh, you I went that? to West Point, and I was in the military. Right. But I was after nine years, I got out and started my own business, but I stayed yeah. a reservist. So I was activated and went back in. And then I decided to yeah. stay in after a while. I did so many years. I've got two new dogs, two new puppies right now, if you hear them, which is okay because we're after the show. We're after the podcast. I do a podcast. So what I do now is I've tried to create new media. I do a daily podcast, which is really a netcast. It starts like this. I could put you on it. Or do you have a? You have the app on your phone. Do you ever listen to podcasts? Yeah, yeah. It, Wait, I'm going to blab in my computer. Okay. Say again. Oh, you have email. I'm going to blab on okay. my computer. Very good. This way, I mean. Also, um, if you can drop in, you have a website or a link. Yes. No state. Timeline. Yeah. You can just click. Okay, you type it in too. Yeah, that's right, because you're on the phone. So, yeah, that was yesterday's. I should make a place for people to send email. I put my email. Send me an email. Here's my email. Okay. Bill. Uh, Oops, I, I spelled my name. But I did it wrong. Yeah. Conradteam.com. Okay. You're doing well, and you've learned. That's interesting. They had an ad on the on the in the TV. That's really interesting. Okay. Let me try something else uh, here. I'm trying this. I go up here. Oh, find blood. Okay. Yeah. And then, 
See what I just did? And then, 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 you can see around my house. That's a, wait, wait, Must have just wait, went wait. off. Interesting. He's back. So you're on the computer now, right? See? You see you're on my yeah. house? Okay. <laughs> oh, great stuff. See that? Nice. Look, you can see the mess stuff out. My <laughs> sword. Worry. See, if I get mad, I got my sword behind me. Oh, really, very interesting. You know, I'm practicing uh, how much you'll fight for, you know, uh, I'm using this type of sword. Uh-huh. So you can put that over there. You're le learning martial arts. Yeah. Uh, do you know the sport? Get what I That's good. So yeah, I want to go back to this business that you're learning. You're learning to be yeah. an exporter. Um, when you're going to go to work for a corporation, what are you going to be an intern or what kind of company would you work for? Uh, you know, I want to, to work with a company who um, uh, ought to explain. I want, in my job, I want to practice the languages. So, you know, uh, I'm learning, I'm studying Chinese, Spanish, and English. So later I want to use this uh, languages. And so what, uh, have the, you traveled? Have you, did you travel a lot in Europe? Yeah, England and Spain, Croatia, uh, Italy, and that's all. I heard Croatia was very nice now along the coast. Oh, in uh, where? In Cro Croatia, it's, is it is it the coast? Yeah. So is it co has a lot of coastline, water, yeah. ocean, Mediterranean. Yeah, in the the uh, east of Cuba. Very good. So what? Hey, Mike, you want us to come up and say hi? We've got. Let's say your name is Darren. 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 Uh, in Fran in French is Dylan. Dylan, Dylan, I should say Dylan. That's right, Dylan. I have a friend who spells the same way, Dylan. So Dylan is up from France. Mike, really interesting today. Because of our connection into France, I think it actually sorted things differently. In respect to? Towards of finding, finding it. I don't know. What are you doing today? Dylan, meet the, Mike. He is from Ohio, still Ohio. Hey, Dylan. Hi. What's up? Dylan. Dylan. D like D I L A N. D I L A N. Dylan is studying export and he's 19 and he's in France. My question is when you get out, how do you get a job? Does the government help you or how do you just go around and look? Okay. You know, in box. France, the box. Yeah. It's, um, it's very difficult to find a job in France. So I don't want to work in France. Uh, I just want to, to work in a, a foreign country. <laughs> Hello, Doug. Is that your helper? Yeah, it's one of the helpers. Let me get the other one. Oh, they're both lads or brothers. Oh, man, old. man. Let me say hi, George. This is the thicker yeah. one. They're both brothers. I don't know. I give you credit. <laughs> a lot of work. You know that a lot of work. We had, oh, yeah. they're, they're half English, half American. That's what I, uh, wow. I think when the kids were always bugging me, I said, I, didn't, I, I have kids. That's if I wanted pets, I'd had pets, but I had kids. <laughs> we had a pure American. Well, we live in dog country. Everyone where we live in the Sierras and the mountains and the lab mm -hmm. is the most popular dog here. Our last American was off of a ranch, a horse ranch. It was wild. It was crazy. Yeah. Now, my brother-in-law was big into that because he, uh, he used him for hunting. He'd, mm -hmm. go to, he'd go to Kansas and do uh, what, pigeon or yeah. bird hunting or whatever. The Americans are, are for hunting. The Americans are bred to hunt. They're longer legs. They're skinnier. They're a little more hyper, but they're very good dogs. The English are more mellow. So this is a half breed. It's both English and American. So it's a little shorter, a little different. So Dylan, that's the, you got to see the dogs. We're just having fun. We're just calling what we call this is just blabbing. It's really interesting today. I didn't get the numbers today. Isn't this weird? What makes some people come on some days and not other days? Is the title? I don't know. Yeah, and I, uh, uh, and I don't know how big John was like on Twitter because you know he could tweet, but if the but if if he has nobody on Twitter, no one's going to see that. But yeah, I, I was kind of watching that too because I was on the phone, so I, I didn't I I um, couldn't have it going, but I was flipping back and forth, and um, I was kind of wondering about that as well. You sound really good today. Thanks. Hey, by the way, what I'd like to do, I want to have you co-host a couple of these with me. I'm gonna pause. 
15 by 15 studio. Uh -huh. And I said, we could do everything off of this, off of this now. Yeah. And all that, all that equipment in that room was needed because she had to, she did her own editing. Wow. And, um, uh, it was, uh, cause this was a non-for-profit kind of TV studio. So, you know, people were kind of coming and going. Yeah, but yeah, now you could do everything so easily on something that you put in your hand. The iPhone 6S. I'm telling my wife to start really using that to Instagram. The more she gets on this with her real estate, yeah. the more she takes it, and the, and the sooner she gets it up, she can put it right to Facebook on the short little bleeps. Mm -hmm. She'll get much better SEO, and then get it well, on. That's somebody I wanted to get on, and I. Uh, her name's Sonia. She's on Periscope a lot. She always video. She's taking people through houses. She takes them into the closings. She's out of Chicago. Uh, she was on your. She was on your real estate show, and I said, you know, you really need to, you know, get with Bill. So that would be a good real estate person to interview because she's real outgoing and she really understands the uh, the uh, technology. That's what I just reversed the reversed the camera on accident. I hit the screen, reversed it. That's a shoe rack. But 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 the thing, like you're saying, you're seeing more and more real estate people. I'm not seeing any financial people whatsoever getting on this. On the lab. Yeah. But there's other things they can do too. Let me, let me hit this real fast so I can, um, yeah, let me hit. No, I was on a, I was on a blab, uh, Sunday, I think. And, and, and a lady was interviewing somebody and she had a securities license. And I said, you gotta be careful. I they're used gonna, to have, a, I had a security license for about a year. They're going to come down on you. And I, and then, and then I looked at her blab and she did have the disclaimer and everything. Cause in the securities world, you have to get everything, anything advertising has to be approved. Mm-hmm. First, but even your business cards, you know, and um, I said, man, oh, man, I said, you, you got to if you, you mentioned even the word investment, they you could get fined. I do live streaming and Merrill Lynch was doing a, a really, really, really good. Uh, it was a really good lay down about the money and bonds in the market and the crash. Mm -hmm. And we could not stream that because of that regulation. Oh, yeah, it was right. really good. Too. Was Talk about lock of freedom of speech. Right. And if you were to use Somebody well, challenge that, well, here's my thought on this, but, but what happens if you're going to do a, um, 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 a seminar, like mm -hmm. a senior seminar, uh, all has to be approved. You yeah. know, be approved. well, this one, a seminar, this is just a speech to a group of well, anything, anything where you're going to be voicing. Yeah. You have to get it approved. Now here's the thing. And I told this girl, how does that I work said, in the first amendment? Well, here's the issue. Um, well, I don't know. I mean, because they, they can turn around and find you. I mean, the SEC, that's federal. Is, so that, is, getting, that, is that a violation of my First Amendment? I think so. I, apparently, it must not be because I've known people on social media that are getting fined um, because of yeah. you know, what they're saying or, you know, that, that it hasn't been approved by their broker dealer. That mean, that's bad dealer, government. That's bad government. Anytime yeah. you gag somebody that's in America, it's gagging. That's gagging people. But here, here's here's my issue with this all along. Why I don't have a securities license anymore is they beat the hell out of they beat the heck out of the little baby securities dealer mm -hmm. who might be doing you know fifty a hundred thousand in 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 revenue, but the big guys, you know the, the, that are stealing billions, can just do whatever they want. <laughs> so, oh yeah, the banks. Yeah, that too well, big to fail. Yeah, I mean, and, and as I said, you look at that movie, The Big Short. Yeah. You know, so the the small time investor. That's why, that's why Americans are so torqued off right now. Yeah, stuff like this. That's a good example. Well, and that's why too. I mean, and and it's a hard sell because the um, the investment arena has done so well at you know teaching people how that you don't have to put your money at risk to make money, and 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 we've been ingrained to believe that if you want to build your portfolio, you have to put your money at risk. Yeah. And when you use that word risk means, yes, you can lose it, which the majority of people do. Right. Uh, it doesn't just evaporate. Uh, the people in the, you know, in the big, in the big offices have it all. Cause I, I was talking with this same lady. Um, they were talking about the, uh, the big power ball that, that you could have virtually have given everybody a million dollars. And I said, yeah, you'd do that. But I said, within six months to a year, that money would all be back where it, where it all started from. The billion, people, you can give a thousand people. There's was it 1.5 billion. So you could give um, the billion. So you could give fifteen hundred people a million dollars. I think that's it. But I would have said within a year that money would all be back where it started from because because of the ways that people don't understand it and stuff. So so that's why uh, you know the people that I've had that have invested and used life insurance as a tool are very very happy yeah. because they're consistently making seven percent tax free. 
and you yeah tax free and you under, that's really important i understand that and you understand um property well too you got that property concept down yeah. you know, mm-hmm. you. i always believe you leverage but one thing i have learned over the years make sure you have a pro- a break even cash flow or good reserves i've made money with negative cash flow on property but it's when i sold it but if you can well, build up a break even and just keep it indefinitely you'll do so well oh yeah and then i mean even even uh, maybe in your well, it would be in your pocket, but then just the uh, the tax benefits could all sometimes offset maybe a little bit. And, of and you got principal pay down, but your cash flow can still be negative, which can be rough. You can be yeah. you can be making money and be positive, but still have a negative cash flow because you're print, you're paying down principal, paying down the loan. But if you yeah. if you buy a property and it, you know if if you didn't refinance it, it would be paid off over a period of years, and that's a very secure thing. But I, I always used to leverage as much as I could to get as much as I could. You know, I had three or four right. properties. Oh, yeah. I built a subdivision. I had, I built, if I just stayed what I was doing, owning and building properties, instead of drilling a subdivision, I'd have millions of dollars right now. And I have a beautiful home in Tybee Island. The Tybee Island I bought for, I bought it in foreclosure. We subdivided it, fixed it up, finished it. The house, I had it under a hundred thousand. The house eventually went up to 800,000, but I sold it well before that. And I bought it in cash on the courthouse steps. Pretty amazing. It's like some of those, uh, those rehab people in some of those reality shows and stuff pretty yeah. interesting they, they're going in with cash they get the deal they go on they you know they flip it, it around. yeah they flip them but you need to hold some of your properties the people that make real money hold their property isn't that weird yeah. no one's coming up today what's what's going on you think i don't know i open mike how to how to build a virtual team i thought that was a pretty good topic what would be a good give me a topic i'll stick a topic in real fast before we finish up it is 8 30 it's about time to leave anyway no, it's got to be late. It's one thirty here. It's one thirty-eight here. So normally by ten thirty, I need to finish up. I'm just frustrated that I didn't get more people up today. Jonathan came by. I don't know. I mean, yeah, here Eastern time, it's it's almost two o'clock. So I mean, it could be have something to do with it. Let me just. I watched Tony Robbins yesterday. Robbins. Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. Let me just check. I'm going to look on Blab just to see what's going on. Yeah. Let's see. We'll probably get some any. feedback. I'm going to cut the and whoever gets the featured and how that works. Because I mean, here it's like three kids talking. So, yeah. but um, uh, Audacity Blab Lab, I've seen that a few times. Somebody called the Audacity Coach. I think I know who that is. There's this woman here. I've seen her on. She talks a lot about plugins. Um, she's got 16 people watching. This so did Audacity you, Blab. Did you just open up another window to do this? Yeah. Yep. Problem is, sometimes when I open up, you get an echo. I'm opening up a window right now. Robin Wright's got hers going on right now. Yeah, I know Robin. She's, she's got 19 on there. This says uh, how to stay away from marketing past mistakes. Eight. Yeah. 11, 13. I got some foreign ones up here. I can't read there. I should be able to see mine somewhere on here too. I can't see mine right now. You're you're in the second row. So. Second row. I mean, down. I just went through it. I didn't see it here. Yeah, on mine. You're in the second row. First one, second row. So you're the fifth one. I don't see mine at all. Mine's not up. See Maybe it's on top. And, and uh, sometimes on top, I think you get less. They got that top row. And then I got yeah. Then we go down to the bottom. So there's quite a few. Actually, I don't see mine right now. Oh, there it you is. Sc- You're right. You sc- there you it is. Scroll down to the bottom, and it ends up being all the foreign ones. It says open mic. Yeah, the foreign ones. And they got. So, 10 yeah, I mean, mics. there's nothing. Nothing. You know, you got people in the teens. Okay. Well, here's the audacity coach. She's got 21 people now. Where's the audacity coach? Well, that's the first one that I'm seeing. What's it look like? The first one? It says Audacity Bla- Lab. Oh, Lab. yeah. I'm going to go above. Yeah, yeah. Social Media Rockin' is the first one. Audacity is the second one, the blue. Yeah, so Social I, Media, that's the third one. I'm I think on. I know who that is. I Barb Tolan. Oh, yeah, Barb Tomlin. She is on um, uh, Jonathan uh, Jonathan's. No, no. She's the back end for Marty Mc, McFadden, I think. Who is? That Barb T- Tomlin, she she's on the social media rock and tools one right now. Tools, yeah, the one on the left. She's on, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, Ginger. Yeah, she's. Barb, she's yeah. I think I think she, Blab Nation. So no, Blab Nation. That's Jonathan Tripp. So yeah, she's like back. She does a lot of. She seems to be like a back office person for some of those other guys. Uh, I need to look at my looks here. How can I change that timelines netcast? Um, school Blab. How to find? Here's one. Let's look at the topics and we'll finish up today. What are the best topics? No, let's, let's right. analyze the uh, Blab feeds. I'm looking at them all like right. you are. I like, like the Audacity Lab. 
colors. I like that color. It's got a little lab image in the back. It's like my wife likes to analyze business cards, you know. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> it's old school, yeah. So we got one. Hey, hi up there. That's uh, Dolphin, Daphne Blackman. Hi, Daphne. Good to see you. Daphne. Daphne. Excuse me, Daphne. I'm bad. Daphne. I've seen Daphne around. Yeah. Because so, I'm following her on. Uh, so anyway. So keep, we'll, let's keep on looking. We're looking at these sites here. So I like that green a lot on the Docity Lab. Yeah. Lab, I like mm -hmm. that. I think, um, what is her name on the blog aid? She's been around for a while. She's That's good. Audacity Coach, but I don't know who that is. No, blog, if, if I, are you seeing blog aid? I, blog aid. Yeah, see, it's a, I can't think of her name. She's got a red shirt on. She's on my top right she's third oh yeah 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 no I, that, that's the second one on mine third yeah i've mine. seen her and i don't know her name she's good she's yeah mm. and then we got a political one on down here your uh interactive tv newsroom that's a weird one and then there's been what do you think of that din that's just some guy constantly streaming a lot of different places and he's just using blab to stream he's on the very top of mine din Hold on here i want the, the red one it says your blog, interactive tv blog. newsroom Waiting for you at 5 Eastern tomorrow here. It's got DIN. It's up right now. I think it's just a stream. Okay. And then, uh, so what works? So what's the top? Not a lot right now. 16 watching, 20 watching the Dossy Blab. I'll probably watch that for a couple minutes. Hardly anybody watching me today. Yeah, she's not putting her name. Well, here it is. Okay, Ma Anna Stevenson is her Where name. Where did you the find that? Blog, from Blog8. I went to Twitter. Okay, but to do that, you had to open up that. Well, no, I I, I just opened up Twitter, oh. and then I just typed oh, her. Blog aid. Um, yeah, and it's Ma Anna Stevenson. So it's M A yeah. capital A N N A Stevenson. I really think you need to put your name somewhere on there. Yeah. So she's. Um, yeah. So Ma Anna, because I've listened to her, and that's that name still doesn't resonate, but. All right, so what was the other one you were talking about? So we're looking about? down below. Um, I thought um, Audacity Lab looks pretty good. I think I know who does that. Yeah. yeah. They've got 20. There's not a lot of people watching any one show today, so it's like really spread out. Yeah, after the first row. I mean, there's some of these foreign ones that <clears> – <throat> I think we're going to have a big uh, political show because there's no football this weekend. There's so much going on, so I think that's going to do well. But you got to promote it. you got to send it out ahead of time. Then we've got one is what's up with you, plans, goals, and success. That's like me. They only have four. Uh, There's one here, tips for building lasting client relationships, but it's only got six. I don't see that one. It oh, I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got it. On the air, biz, bizchicks.net. It's off, yeah. Yeah, that's that's always been that question. You know, when do you get that tipping point? I mean, Joel Kahn will come on and just put – Joel Kahn's talking and he'll have – you know, 50 people and a thousand people in the back. He's end, written a book. I think he's emailing or twi emailing it out too. He's got a lot of, in Twitter, he's huge on Twitter, Joel Kahn. Tony well, Robbins yeah. Well, he's... Yesterday had a lot of folks. Let's see if you can find the Tony Robbins show. I'm going to search Tony Robbins. So I'm going to go in the search and put Tony, T-O-N-Y-R-O-B-I, Robbins. Is Robbins, Tony Robbins? And I would have to say he would, that would, he would probably be the the biggest person that I would have known of that's been he had, any of these. He had about 200 people live and he had about a thousand people come through that I saw. But I just searched Tony Robbins, R O B I N S, right? Tony Robbins, I did that. R, R O B B I N S, Tony Robbins. See if I find him. I can't find I don't him. Do you have that trouble with the search bar? I type in and the letters don't always come yeah, up. I got to type real slow. T O N Y, I just put Tony. It's a sci fi talk. I don't see any Tony Robbins up there though. Yeah, it's not interesting. Yeah, I'm seeing sci-fi talk, too. Now, it wasn't his channel. It was the other guy. He, oh, there he is. All no, right, no, right. wait. Yeah, yeah, you got uh, Brian Fanzo and John Lee Demas. And what? Yeah, I didn't get that, but I see him down below on Anthony Co Coughlin. It's the first time, supposedly, he's been on. Right. And he had right. 1,780 views, Yeah. and they just had the views. I might, I'm might. i going to bring that up real fast. Hopefully, it does. I don't think it'll mess up the sound because it's a recording. So I'm looking at the recording. It says 286 replays, 864 live views, 393 shares. Here's the link. So that's not that great. I thought he'd have more than that. Yeah. Oops. She's, she pronounces it me, me mama, me mama. So 
Oh, there's a question. Well, can I air? Let's see. Well, it's M A A N N A. So I'm not paying attention there's only, here. There's only one M. I cannot ever, yeah, that's true. I cannot ever find what I'm looking for. That's very true. I'm going to try to. Yeah, I find when I type into the that search bar up the top left, you have to be very slow because <laughs> it, yeah. it, it like skips every other letter and then you look at it and you go, oh man, and I go back. Yeah, so that's, it's a very, uh, not a user-friendly tool. You know, Daphne, to, uh, he's in the photography. I'm looking at your site right now. I wish I could do Photoshop, but it's kind of cool. You've got that Photoshop thing in there down below. I'm looking at her website. Uh, did I, da it's Daphne? Daphne, right? I'm terrible. Da Daphne. I'd say Daphne. Daphne, Daphne. I'm looking at your site right now. I thought of a way yesterday. Probably you probably know more than I do about how to make line with photography on the site. But what if you gave away for lead magnet a bunch of photography? Just gave it away and then had some premium stuff you pay for and then ask for donations. You know, and then start getting your stuff out there. Maybe have a little logo or something on the corner. You don't even do that. So I'm looking at your site right now. Skating portraits. So she does portraits. Those are beautiful. But what if you just went out and just took a lot of natural scenes or things or get permission and gave away art? Not all of it, but just some of it as a lead magnet. And people start coming to you and they might even donate. And they said, if you use it, we just ask you to give some kind of donation. If you use it commercially. I mean, some people aren't, but at least you're getting um, magnets. And then have premium work. And then also um, do your normal work to get people online or doing other things to come to see and do it. I'm just thinking out loud. So it's just a thought. She's definitely, she says she's been studying everything. Um, Dr. Nicholas Hernandez works in the art galleries in Laguna Beach. He's on the, on the political show came up yesterday. So I just, that, I thought of a way right there. Okay. How, you know, b building a virtual team. That's a good topic. Like we're talking right now mm -hmm. and, and also mentoring and training people, by the way, when you come up in the morning, even if you go off, I need to make you a co-host no matter what. Okay. Remind me to do that. Yeah, because if I'm off, I can still... Get back on, yeah. Well, and I can still do stuff on that. Oh, yeah, you can do stuff. So remind me to make you a co-host. I forgot to do that this morning. Mm. Let's go on a few more minutes. So looking, let's go back and looking at the names and what works and what doesn't work. We can also talk while we're doing it, building a virtual team and looking at names. So do I have my recording? Yeah, I am. How about one? Have you been have you been taken advantage of by a online coach? <laughs> Where's that? What's it look like? No, I I I, I just thinking of titles. <laughs> Let me tell you who I've seen. I've worked with some business guys. I helped put together about seven or eight websites last year. And I what I try to te teach people is, hey, let's go in here and learn WordPress, the basics of WordPress. Let's buy a, a relatively inexpensive uh, host. And this put your domain over here somewhere else, either GoDaddy or put them on, you know, I'll be, put them on, I think my site, my uh, reseller account, which is real simple to put your domain on. It's cost less than $10 a year to have a domain. And then you point it, if something happens to me, it's going to be taken over by Western domains, which is the people who work for do um, GoDaddy and they manage it. So it, it, you take it, it's DS, you point it at your website you, and you don't give anybody, including me, the password to get into that thing. So you always control your domains. I've seen more business people go to somebody to build a website and they don't even have on who is that they own their domain. Yeah. And then they lose it. Or the person who's building the website holds them hostage. You know, hey, I, you know what the secret is online right now? I bought WPTonic.com yesterday. Hear that? I heard uh, Jonathan is WP tonic.com. I hate dashes. I'll probably right, actually yeah. give it to him, but in the meantime, I want to start sharing the uh, lead generation that comes up WP tonic. We both own the podcast 50 50. It's like Tim jumped on here. How are we doing? Tim? Hey, Tim. What's up? Tim, Tim Lynch. I used to know Mike Lynch. Cloud Evangelist. Oh, yeah. Cloud of what's a Cloud Evangelist? <laughs> I have. I have three host accounts. One of them is all cloud. Fairfield, Connecticut. There's probably snow all over the wazoo in Connecticut he right might now. Be, yeah, he might be stuck in his house still. Yeah, he's probably in his house. I'm surprised they have internet capabilities. So I'm in the front room. I'll probably get off here shortly. But 
Well, you, well you, you'd had a question, and now I forgot. I was okay. going to answer it. And I hey, we're getting people coming on now. I noticed that. What we do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How uh, you, we're, yeah. we're talking about how you build a virtual team, and then we are also. Oh, I know what I, I know what I was going to tell you. My my wife has a friend who paid a lot of money to one of these primo online coaching gurus who did absolutely nothing, and she's she's going down the major lawsuit um, arena right now. Oh, let me tell you. And, yeah. And that's what got me thinking about that because, and, 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 and I talked about this on another show where I think some of these uh, wannabe coaches out there selling the, you know, the big ticket programs are going to go by the wayside because, um, well, first of all, I think people are getting smarter, but then too, with lab and these type of platforms, you'd be able to see right through somebody like that. And, um, and you know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to promote that, but yes, yeah, this, but this particular lady, I'm not going to mention her name is very, very well known in the industry. And, um, we're talking some major class action lawsuits because the, they had the whole turnkey, your website, your, your SEO, and they did virtually nothing for this lady. I've got a story similar to that, uh, engineer, uh, mostly in the mechanical oil fields engineer. I know, well, uh, worked in Dubai, those areas making 250 made a lot of money. They came here to Reno and he wanted to create an online business. So he's living, his, his girlfriend's got two places. He spent $37,000 and, and went to some, and you would recognize the online guys, one of the top three or four uh -huh. online guys. Yeah. Three, four, mm -hmm. between that. And then he, they were, they're, they're pitching buying lists. So he's buying mm -hmm. these lists, about like 10,000 people, all this stuff. And, um, by the way, I don't use a VA, but anyway, going on, he spent all this money for this list. And I interviewed hey, him. Tim. I, I interviewed him a few times. And he did this happy, hi, Tim, happy stuff. And what happened was I got some good numbers on my podcast when he would come on. He'd push them out to his team, like 400, 500 extra people watching. But he, he couldn't make any money. He was making very little money compared to what he's spending. And then he went back to work in Texas in the oil fields. And I was trying to follow up on him. And I put in some of his domains, some of his other stuff, and I was getting warnings coming back about, you know, viruses, corruption, all sorts of crap. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. 37000 bucks he paid to these guys. He'd go to, you know, forums, and he bought lists. I've never bought a name in my life. I like your uh, picture in the back yeah. there, Tim. So, Tim, you said you're, you're in uh, Israel? I am. I'm in, I'm in uh, Herzliya right now. Oh man! Oh man! So I'm uh, I'm about an hour outside of Tel Aviv. Oh really? Um, here on business, and um, I'm here tonight because my flight's delayed. So uh, I was supposed to fly out tonight, and now my flight's tomorrow morning. What are you doing there on business? Uh, so we're a cloud we're a cloud SaaS company. Uh huh. Um, and so we have a development office here. So I was out here for a bunch of investors meetings and a couple of VC investor meetings. You should come on WP Tonic. So, <laughs> come on, which? Uh, this is after the hour. I finished my part. WP Tonic. It's uh, it, it's been number oh, two in WordPress. Uh, if you'd Google WordPress oh, category. Awesome. Um, no. So what do you do for I'm what kind of SaaS products? So we're in the behavioral analytics. Um, basically, uh, if you think about like um, what Fitbit does. Uh huh. Okay, so we're Fitbit for the cloud. So we're, we're the business version of Fitbit. So what are your employees doing? What are they, how are they contributing to your, your business intelligence applications? So it's not, uh, whereas you think of like Google Analytics and, uh, you know, IBM, many eyes, they, they can analyze what's going on in your org. We tell you how it went on. Do you, do you own part and of the business? have to deal with that remedy. I'm sorry. Do you own part of the business? Uh, yes, I'm one of the show shareholders also. You know, I just put in my link, and when you get back to a good connection, and have some time every morning at nine o'clock Eastern or nine nine o'clock Pacific, twelve o'clock awesome. Eastern, I do a podcast. It's actually a, I do a, a blab, goes into YouTube blog, and then podcast that same day. So I'd like to have Perfect. somebody like you up, get a, a good connection. But even I like even more so, I like whoever I interview to come up ahead of time. Everybody knows I'm on at this time. Why doesn't everybody that I interview at least come up after the show and introduce themselves? Mike, why, why don't they do that? Absolutely. 
Well, I think it's just expectation. So I need to write that up. Say, hey, come up and introduce yourself. Well, I, I, will, we I will sign on. I, I'll sign up. Um, I'm back in New York tomorrow, so that's when you know the world gets normal for me. Yeah, what's your background? Um, I, well, Bill, so, too, to answer your question, I think part of it is uh, people that have been interviewed think I need if I'm interviewing at noon, I come on at noon. Because most of the platforms, right. you no, can't you'd even. No, you come on at noon. If you're being interviewed at noon, you're on at eleven. No, but I'm saying though, like say Google Hangout. Well, you can't you can't talk before you hit the yeah. the, the button. Oh, so you hit the you open know, button. Lab, no, I'm just saying. Yeah, you lab, on the day lab you can you can start talking. Yeah, but in any case, I think it's just. I need to write people happen. on my little thing. I need to write my notes better. Uh, Tim, I have I'm new to WordPress in the last two years. But I used to use Exchange yep. Server and a lot of PCs. I was a design build engineer, so I used AutoCAD. I built 20 websites yep. and I've got three providers. So wh yep. what's your background? Yeah, so, um, oh boy. So, I mean, I'm MSC. Well, my MCSE was from the 90s. <laughs> um, I set up, you know, Exchange Servers, you know, Exchange Server 2. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> um, to Exchange Server 5. So the good old days, if you 2003 will. was my last um, one. Right. Um, so I had seen, um, I had jumped on this blab, honestly, because I'm down in the bar area and they gave me a Glen Morangi and I'm like, Hey, all right, I'll take, you know, Highland scotch any day of the week. Yeah, that's good. But somebody had posted about, um, a question about using a virtual assistant to post to your blog. Uh -huh. and, and, and that really is one of my, um, my my key issues if you will um i don't want to get up on a soapbox but it's fine and for all of my blog posts believe me i have a i have a great editor i actually have two wow um and i have three great writers that work for me wow nobody posts but me nobody i can outsource i can outsource you know referencing and researching what i'm doing but when you post something as yourself, you can't take that back. That's you. So you can never outsource that. You can outsource a little bit of help, but it's your responsibility to go back and to review everything that those people that are working for you do. So if you want to outsource because you want to, you know, you have a content calendar, you need some help to get to it. That's great. That's fine. That's working smart, but it is still your blog. It is still your responsibility. It's still your content. So if you don't read every single word that goes in your blog, I've got a problem with it. Um, and I kind of view myself as I am my own last buck. So while other people may help me, when it hits my blog, when it hits my brand, when it puts my name on it, I have to review that. I have to research that. I have to fact check my own stuff. Um, and I, I just think you know the virtual assistants being able to automate or outsource what you do helps to a point, but it's still your name. Oh, yeah, I got it. I didn't want to get off on a soapbox. No. Hey, Bill, I'm gonna just going to refresh because a lot of my things aren't working here, so I'll be right <laughs> The blab. Where do you stay on, Tim? Oh. Stay on for a few more minutes. I, I usually try to yeah. cut off by, uh, by 1030 my time, but if it's a good blag or we get some information, I learn a lot from people. Plus, this is how I can find some really good people for the show like you. Absolutely. Glad to, glad to be on the show. Where do you live? Do you live in New York or Connecticut? I, I was looking. I'm in Connecticut, just outside New York. So I, I'm in New York. Um, I'm in New York about once a week. I'm in Boston about once a week. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm in, I'm in Philly twice a month. Wow. Um, I work for, I work for a startup. So we go where the business is. Yeah. It'll be an interesting show. Interesting to hear that. I have a friend who is building a SAS, Jonathan Dinwood on WP Tonic. It'd be interesting to bring people on who have built SASs. What's your SAS? Do you have it? Do you have, can you stick it in here? Um, sure. It's a uh, app Lango. So I'll let you stick it in. App Lango. Here we go. Hey Cliff. There's Cliff. Cliff. Oh, uh, damn. Auto correct. <laughs> I hate that. What I kind of computer are you using? Correct. Uh, it's my iPhone. Oh, your iPhone. Nice. Yeah. There we go. Um, so that's our company. Lynch Insights is, you know, my personal brand. And um, so what we're doing is we're, we're quantifying user behavior. Yeah. And um, so we're, you know, 
I, I'm I'm the brand guardian or, you know, brand guardian or whatever you want to call it. So whether it's the chief customer officer, the chief marketing officer, put any name that you need to in order to understand what it is. So that's, that's interesting. Now, I just got a pop up. We'll send you five dollar Starbucks card. Yeah. I like that. Attend a demo right. and that's like a, a webinar. Wow, that's a nice pop up. Yep. It's a beautiful pop. That's one of the nicest. I should have captured that. That's the nicest pop up I've ever seen. I think. <laughs> so that's one of those things where um, you want to have a bias, and then you always test your own beliefs, right? So I am a big proponent of, and I could go, I could, I could go on for hours if you ask me about pop ups. I tell you, never, ever, ever over my dead body. And if you said, I want to do an exit intent, which is when somebody's going to leave mm -hmm. your website, you're going to do a pop-up, then hold on. You just hit two of the worst things I view in life. I'm going to leave your brand and you're going to chuck your shoe at me and say, but wait, here's this other thing. But one of the people that I'm working with believes in it and they want to try it. Um, so we're trying it again. So what do you think works? Doing another how, do get, how do I get email addresses? How to get email addresses? Yeah. Um, honestly, I always do better uh, in person. Meet up. <laughs> That's not meet online. Up. Figure, you know. Well, meet up is online. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Meet up. I'm familiar with meet up. Yeah. Well, it is, but it is meet up. Meet, yeah. meet up com. Right. Meet up com. No, most of those are face to face. So you set up a meet up. I have a meet up group here in Reno and then two. Yep. Absolutely. So I mean, when we were starting out, we had no customers and no, no people. What, what I did is, um, and for everybody, it's different. Find your maximum. So what I do is I do 500 miles. I yeah. can do 500 miles. Mm -hmm. On 500 miles, I've got issues. I got to book a hotel room. That's a long but way. I can do 500 miles. 500, well, 500 miles. 500 miles from where I am gives me Boston. Yeah. Gives me Montreal, gives me DC, gives me Pittsburgh, yeah. gives me Chicago. Yeah, D and so f at 500 miles, I can do Airbnb. So for gas money and Airbnb, I'm looking at less than a $200 investment. Wow. And I get to actually see and talk to so many people. I get their business card. We have a great relationship. We have a great conversation. If if my business is a fit for bit, their business, it's great. If not, it's a referral. Um, and so what does that cost me? What would I have to do to replicate that in Google AdWords, Facebook, dark posts, sponsored tweets? Now, it, it, replicate it, you're, you're in Tel Aviv, so I think you're a few more than 500 miles away. Uh, well, for, for our investors, I'll, I'll hop on a plane. <laughs> so did you build this sash yourself did, or did you have developers work with you no actually i joined the company because uh the founders of the company came from engineering and physics two mm -hmm. of my loves um and then the the third intersection is behavior and that's What's you know that's my background is in psychology and what's going on can you hear me hey l oh you know what's what? up Just pause them real fast psychology what'd you say bill we can hear you Oh, you can hear me. Okay, cool. Can you hear us? I can hear you, sir. Yes, sir. So, yes. Al, where are you coming in from? Do you guys know each other? California, sir. California, yes, sir. Orange County. Awesome. Hey, watch out. There's some prisoners running around down there. They escaped from Santa Ana. They're dangerous. Oh, really? I'm not scared. I mean, bring it. <laughs> I did time in a penitentiary. Hey, Bill, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off because I'm not even on headphones. Hey, so, Al, Tim, awesome Tim, real fast. Before you sign off, you got that Al, link, right? Absolutely. Tim, nice talking to you, man. Wish you could stay longer. Hell, great great talking to you. And, and we're gonna we're gonna get connected when I'm back in uh Yeah, man, sure. I like you, man. Where are you at again? Connecticut. New York. New York. Oh New York or oh, New York. Hey, hey Al. I mean there Tim, one last go. thing. My, my my two girls and wife and sister are flying back on Thursday from Reno to New York. They're gonna be down in the water. There's a big gymnastics match there. My, my daughters are big oh, into gymnastics. Awesome. Is it cold? Probably snow everywhere, though. And it, thank good that Northeast there, is going out the ocean. From, from what I heard, there's more snow coming next week. It's supposed to. Well, they're so, going to go Thursday night. The flight Thursday night, be there Friday morning. They compete on the weekend. Mm -hmm. Awesome. 
So hopefully it doesn't oh, snow. And then when do they fly out? Uh, Monday. Or Sunday night or Monday. I, I got to check. That might be the problem. If it's Sunday, they're fine. If it's Monday, I think that's borderline. They compete in the morning. I know that. I'm not sure. I've got to double check. But it's a direct flight from Reno to uh, JFK, one of the big airports around uh, the city. So nice. Awesome. We'll see you, Tim. So El, El, where are you from? Right. Me? Are you talking to me? He's from Orange County. You're from Orange County. Keep on talking. Oh, you can't, where, 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 where are you from in Orange County? Newport. Oh, wow. Nice. Newport Beach. I know that well. What about you? Where'd you go to school? What about you, man? Where I'm are you in at? Reno, Nevada. And Mike is over in Stowe, Ohio. Right. And so where'd you go to, uh, where'd you go to school? Did you, did you grow up? School? I'm gonna, and Phil, school? I'm going to jump off. I got to get back to work here. Hey, real fast. Another oh, 10 minutes. We'll stay on the line. Alone, huh? Okay. Hey, stay on for a second. We'll just finish up. Where are you in Orange County? Like you said, Newport. Where you go to grow up there? Yes. Yeah, but I don't want to put the, the the name of the school out there. You know, I don't want them to represent. Okay. You know. Let me tell you what I know about the area. You got you got Newport High School. You got Newport High. You got Estancia, Costa Mesa, and Corona del Mar. That's oh, all. Oh, you know schools. everything about Orange County, huh? <laughs> It's everyone knows and Laguna Beach, you know, the, and you got Laguna Beach, which is that show, yeah. the, the, the old show came out of. Uh, yeah, it's a damn show. But I, I listen, I don't I represent me. OK, I don't represent nobody. And I might be living in California, but I still know how to get hood. OK, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I'm going to get hood with you, but, yeah. you know, I'm just whatever's popping. In Santa Ana is where the main jail is. And they just had criminals escape out of Santa Ana. I was just watching okay, on the news. Okay. I didn't even, I don't really, I mean, I'm not trying to sound oh. ignorant. I don't really pay attention. I, I left the school. So whoever. Estancia High School's in there too. Yeah, let me Google that shit. What what person again that got escaped? What did they three, do now? Three guys got escaped. Uh, one was a killer uh, and two, they're, um, two are Vietnamese gangs too out of, uh, oh, really? interesting to watch. Yeah. And they actually escaped. That's a hard prison to escape out of the Santa Ana Bowl up by Santa mm-hmm. in the middle of Santa Ana. I grew mm-hmm. up. I'm, I'm, my family came in the 1800s into California. They're up and down the whole city state, so I, I know the state pretty well. Oh, and Newport came generations, huh? Yeah. All right, that's dope. Okay, Mr. Wizard. And so we own oh. buildings. We own property in uh, in Santa Ana, big buildings. Mm. So. Okay, that's 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 pretty that's pretty dope. Sorry, I'm just telling. You, that's why I know a little bit about the area, and I actually went to school mm. at Estancia High School. Oh, really? Yeah, Gold ball. miners. Person, who is this? Eagles. They're eagles. Oh, William Selassie. So, dude, what was the topic again before I came on? We're just talking about open mic. How do you build a, a virtual team? Okay. What do you do? I just do me, man. <laughs> I, well, I just looked at your uh, Twitter site. You need to tweak that. Well, that's not you. On your Twitter site? What, tw- what Twitter site? On your, um, when you log in, if you come up. Yeah, I don't, that's not my, re- I use that Twitter just for, um, just for a uh, blab, I'm not gonna put my or use my real Twitter. You know, I don't think it's it's. I think it's okay to use your own stuff and real stuff and be what you are. That's what we're talking no, about. How I you don't, trust no, 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 no. I listen. You can ask me anything. I'm an open book. But the thing is, I'm not interested in Twitter anymore. Something hmm. happened, and I'm just not using that shit no more. Well, you got to learn. We don't cuss on the show either. So. Oh, sorry. So. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. 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 I'm just going to, it's right. not bad. It's not going to be on iTunes. So I guess All it's right. not as critical on YouTube. Oh, so. you record podcasts. Is that what you do? What I do is I come on in the morning and I do a uh, netcast, okay. which is on this. And All right. Into a uh, YouTube and then the oh. blog and then a podcast. How much coins do you get of that? Money? Not much. I just building a business. Oh. I'm, I'm experimenting, but you know what? You got to build it for oh. a while and you learn. So. Okay. What All you, right. How do you make money? Do you do it on, work online try to build a team? No, I'm still living with my parents. Yeah, it's okay. It's good. That's how you make money by not spending money. Well, you know, I, well, I do make certain coins, you know, on Chatterbait. Yeah. You know, what's Chatterbait? I've never heard that. Oh, you never heard of it? Okay. I'll put it in right now and we'll, that'll be our last topic. We'll talk about Chatterbait. Sure. <laughs> what is Chatterbait? It, it, it is something. Sometimes a hoe's got to do what hoe's got to do, you know. I'm not, sorry, oh, hoe is not a bad word, right? I, I see what it is, yeah. That's an interesting place to make money. Yeah, sometimes you got to do what you got to do to make some coins. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Coins. You know, well, I'll I never mean, knock a hoe's hustle down, you know. You got to do what you got to do. I'm going to let you go. Take care. Enjoy that beautiful right. weather down in Southern California in the waves. And watch out for those bad All guys. Right. All right. See you, man. Okay. Bye, Billy. Take care. Thanks for coming on. 
Well, we've had another fun day in Blab. I went over. I tried to finish by 1030. I missed by 40 minutes. But you meet more people. You get better people on the show. So well, thanks for everybody coming on. And this will be up on timelinesofsuccess.com. I'll type it in here. Timelinesofsuccess.com. That's one of my early websites. It's way too long. I think Nick Casting 101com is one of my other sites. Let's see. And uh, timelines. I'm trying to think. Timelines net cast.com not sure the easiest way to get there but anyway always looking for help on timelines find new and interesting people to interview who have businesses entrepreneurs or just good life stories take care and i'll talk to you guys later